How you doing guys? Me again. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, third week on the trot and I'd just like to say a huge thank you to you guys who have all purchased a box or is about to purchase a box. Uh, your support is unbelievable, much needed this time and also I'm getting a lot quicker as well so it's just gone 10 o'clock which I'm absolutely delighted about. Last job as well so it's awesome. Um, I just wanted to, quick, well, just wanted to quickly update you on uh, the COVID-19 situation within this vicinity here. Uh, just basically to earn your, uh, hopefully your confidence in how we operate. Uh, basically there is only there are two people in this kitchen and we are no less than two metres away at all times. Uh, basically we just, just actually three sections within the kitchen. The hot, side, cold side, and there's pastry through there. We are continually in different areas at all times. We are taking it upon us as well to ensure that we are continually wearing disposable gloves, and obviously disposable masks at all times. They're getting replaced regularly. We are also upping our deep clean to a 30 minutes every deep clean. Uh, so yeah, we're taking this pretty, pretty seriously. Uh, my website launches on Saturday. There's also a full COVID-19, um, almost like a a literature paragraph on there that will explain everything from our stance as well. So we are taking this extremely seriously, which is needed, obviously staying alert, which Boris said. So I just wanted to start the film off with that. But we'll go straight into the third week and I will quickly run through with you uh, as always. And uh, yeah, so first off, we start with the bread. This is your milk bread. Obviously your oven should be at 180 degrees. If it isn't, do it now. Uh, put it straight in for about three to five minutes. And it depends on you if you would like a really crispy loaf, then smash it in for a bit longer. If you just want to gently warm it through, then obviously it's a bit shorter as well. So while that's warming up, which I'll place in there, obviously your mama butter is out as well, nice and soft. We will move on to the starter, which this week is a little beautiful velouté, made by Mikey actually, so Mikey made this one. So you will each get a pot of beautiful carrot, spiced carrot velouté. You will get a beef shim ravioli each. Then you'll get a pot of curry oil to share, a pot of homemade sour cream, and then I will now show you how to heat it. Like I said on the instructions, you do not want your water too hot. The reason being is because this has already been blanched, we're only heating the filling through. So if you just want to see how my water is literally almost simmering. So we place that in, and this is exactly the same for the vegetarian as well. For two to three minutes, as I said, you're just gently cooking the center. And for your carrot balloute, you can easily do it in the microwave if you would like to, or like we're going to do, we're going to do it in the pan. Just like that, it's nice and thick, so you can get like a marisa or a spatula to get all the insides out, but obviously you will get one of these each, so heat up two at a time. And then, uh, yeah, come back in a second for plating. Okay guys, so my ravioli has just been reheated for literally about three minutes. Really delicate, so just be careful with that as you do plate it out. Place it onto a little tray, and then come over with me. Okay, what I'll do is, we cook curry, we've got absolutely plenty, so I like to just glaze my ravioli with a little bit of the oil as well, just on top of that. And then um, put a little bit of seasoning on top as well. So how I will plate it, obviously get your bowl, place your soup in the bottom of the bowl first, because you want to sort of show, show the ravioli off a little bit. And then with your uh, sour cream, again, this is exactly how I do. So your homemade sour cream, it's a little blob in the bottom. The reason why I put that in there now and sit the ravioli on top is because you have to break that ravioli as you as you obviously eat into it. So I think it's a really nice idea that you sort of go right through the ravioli and into the uh, sour cream. Beautiful ravioli on top, and then finish it off with a little bit more of that stunning creole. Uh, and then there we are. Quite beautiful curried or spiced carrot soup or velouté with homemade sour cream and a beautiful homemade beef shit ravioli on top. Enjoy guys. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed your starter. Uh, so on to the main course of pork belly. So if you'd like to come into the pork belly and see obviously what you get as a garnish. So you get a beautiful piece of pork belly, which has been brined, uh, braised, pressed and now portioned. It just needs you a little bit, a little bit more cooking uh, for you to um, roast it up. We have a beautiful piece of mangalista black pudding, roasted piece of cauliflower, pork crackling, tea soaked apricots, uh, five spice sauce, and a beautiful white cauliflower puree. So uh, with the cauliflower puree, 100% pop that into the microwave, or ideally you can heat it in the pan if you would like to, but microwave is definitely easier. Um, with your sauce, obviously just reheat that into a little pan. Apricots should be left out at room temperature as soon as you get your box to leave that out at room temperature. If you would like to take the chill off those, or would like them a little bit warmer, again, just place them in the microwave for 10, 20 seconds. 
Uh, same with your pork crackling, make sure that doesn't go into the fridge at all because it will obviously lose its, uh, its crispiness. So make sure that stays out at all times as well. Now I'm just going to run through how I would heat and cook uh, these three elements here. So straight away, always your pork belly first. That's going to take the longest to cook and reheat. So onto a pan, little, little drops of oil in there. Turn it up quite high to be fair. And you just want to place that skin side down. And the skin side, obviously, because it's been braised, it hasn't been crisped at all. So that's what we're going to do. So really push it down. It will spit a little bit, as you can see, because the moisture coming out. It will spit a little bit. And you'll start to see on the sides, you'll start to see this white coming all out. That's, that's the crackling. So that's getting a little bit um, crispier already. And that's obviously what we want. So pressure that down. It's usually happy with that skin side pressing down. Just leave it in that oil. You know, as I said, you want like a medium to high heat. Okay guys, so I've been roasting my pork belly for in and around about three to four minutes, okay? And uh, obviously I've just turned the heat down as well on it so it's not too raging, like you're not frying it then, okay? you're just making sure that skin is crispy. So if you have a look now, it's all starting to colour beautifully actually, it's starting to get nice and crisp as well. So place that down onto there and just get some uh, greaseproof paper and then just place your piece of black pudding and then your uh, your broccoli on there, your cauliflower, sorry, on there as well. And then what we'll do is we'll just put that into the oven. That's 180 for about, yeah, for literally about 10 to 12 minutes, that'll be absolutely perfect. If you would like your black pudding not quite as crispy or, or fried, because it is cooked at the end of the day, you can just gently fry it separately. Just gently fry two minutes aside, it'll be absolutely fine. I'm simply just heating that through, but if you'd like it crispy, Obviously, put it back into a pan and just re reheat it through a separate, separate pan to get a nice bit of crisp on the edge. Cauliflower is absolutely fine there, between 10 to 12 minutes, depending on the, on the temperature of the oven. Again, if you like it higher or, or like it further, to cook it for like 15, 15 minutes if you want to. Okay, guys? Okay, guys, so it's been 12 minutes with our pork belly, cauliflower, and black pudding. So, I'll take it out of the oven now on the tray, on the, uh, in the pan. Place it down, obviously it's super, super hot. And we will do the old crackle test. So, come on in. So yeah, basically it's, it's really soft, that fat starts to, to obviously soften now. Be very careful, obviously, with your hands, super, super soft. Black pudding, beautiful and well, soft, but then crisp on the outside, and your, your uh, cauliflower is beautiful, golden. I did forget to say, you can put a little another butter on either of those, or both of those, if you would like to. And then, uh, and obviously on top of the pork, nice and crispy on top, that's our, our little test. So we'll come to plate, we'll plate it straight away. You, do, you can rest the pork like a piece of meat, because it's been cooked, it's not a, it's not a, you know, it's not a necessity to do that. So, pop it into the corner. I've been asked by a couple of people, apparently, I'm not plating very chefy, uh, which is absolutely fine. No, I'm not plating very chefy, because it's in, the, it's, in the, it's in your own home, so I don't particularly want it. But I'm more than happy to do a little bit of chefy. I'll do a little turn there, I haven't done that in about 10 years. So apologies how crap that looks. Uh, black pudding obviously on. And then your beautiful roasted cauliflower on a sort of deep colour on there. And then I've got your uh, soaked egg because there's a little bit of sweetness and it's super soft as well. So, so the only real soft element on there. So I'll give you actually three halves of those and so cut through the fattiness of the pork as well. And then with your crackling, I said it's pop that on top of your crackling already and then place it on your dish. I did say in the comments as well, don't uh, make sure you don't source all of the crackling simply because it will go soft, but in the day, gotta enjoy it. And then maybe sauce, I always say sauce the meat, but this one is sauce that middle of that plate with your really five spice sauce. And there we are, beautiful. Uh, Woolly Park uh, Port Belly from uh, Charlie at Walter Rose, obviously available now, 20% off at the moment as well. Uh, Manganista black pudding, tea soaked apricots, cauliflower puree and a beautiful roasted piece of cauliflower as well. Enjoy guys. Okay guys, so I really hope you enjoyed that pork dish with just eating it and I thought it was absolutely delicious. Obviously we stayed two meters apart and we each enjoyed our own different plates. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it guys. Uh, this is your dessert and it's in one pot again. So we just left it in the same, in the world. Basically, you could sort of DIY it yourself. You can, this plan of cotta, you can pop it out if you would like to. All you've got to do is just dip it in some hot water take it out and then very gently take it from the bottom to a plate but I would highly not recommend that at all. I would enjoy it uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from, the, from the plastic bowl provided. So this is totally up to you guys. We have some delicious uh, Manor Farm uh, from the lovely Elaine uh, strawberries that we've macerated. 
uh, for two days. So they're super, super delicious. A white chocolate uh, sort of crunch, uh, it's like an oat um, and baked white chocolate, um, sort of granola almost, and then some beautiful creme fraiche cake as well. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful dessert. This is we really enjoyed uh, sort of making it. So uh, very simply, uh, it's obviously one pot between two, so half the strawberries. Uh, so place those on, sort of quite sort of spaced out in your um, in your bowl, which is absolutely plenty in there. And then I would take your uh, your creme fraiche cake, and you don't need a lot of that at all actually, you just to place that all in and around. And then finally, you have your uh, your granola, your white chocolate granola, which is literally just a nice bit of texture on top. Beautiful. And then with the uh, with the strawberries, it has like a nice little juice or syrup with them. Should again just place a little bit of that and then just sprinkle that all over on top. So you've got a beautiful bit of juice in there as well. Panna cotta is super soft, so white chocolate panna cotta with macerated uh, Manor Farm strawberries, creme fraiche cake, and baked white chocolate crunch. Okay, then, guys, that concludes your uh, your meal. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we've just had the panna cotta, and again, I thought it was absolutely delicious, real nice end to the meal. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend trying to tip it out. So, but we had tried that, and I just wouldn't recommend that at all. I think just eat it out of the bowl. It's absolutely delicious. Everything's already made in there. So, guys, again, thank you so much for your support, uh, as always. Uh, as I said to you, every week uh, we're trying to grow, so my website's been launched on uh, Saturday. There's also uh, a book now link in there as well. Uh, like I briefly said earlier about the COVID-19, there's a full uh, description there uh, about how we're sort of treating ourselves and treating the, the, the pandemic ourselves um, from, a, from a business perspective. And also our, our delivery options are changing as well. So obviously at the start it was literally in surrounding areas. We are now delivering to Birmingham and all B postcodes uh, through the Friday and Saturday uh, selection. So again, guys in Birmingham, please hit us up if you obviously would like a box. Uh, and also we are starting our first, or we are trialling our first courier this weekend as well. So if that's going well, hopefully we can broaden our, uh, our delivery options even further as well. So uh, yeah, we're always growing, always uh, ensuring that uh, you know, our customer base is, is getting larger. Uh, but again, for the locality and the people who are, who are uh, obviously keeping us, uh, supporting us all the time. Guys, I can't thank you enough. I really hope you've enjoyed this week. Uh, fresh menu on Saturday, along with my website. And uh, guys, enjoy your weekend and uh, stay alert and enjoy cooking. Thanks guys, see you soon.